In this lesson, we'll take a close look at the outside of the MV. We'll cover its external features, such as its fans and cooling, connections to your system and peripherals, and even cleaning the unit. Note, this is just a high-level introduction, so please don't fret if you feel like we glanced over something. We'll be sure to cover everything in upcoming lessons. Here we're looking at the MV Extreme. However, the MV Pro looks nearly identical, except for the HDMI output, which we'll get to shortly. You can see here, this is an all aluminum case, four rack units high, and built like a tank, weighing nearly 35 pounds. The MV Extreme and Pro both come with a five year warranty on parts and labor to back up its premium build quality. The front plate is 20 millimeters aluminum, and the MV logo and markings you see here are laser etched and feel great to the touch. You can't help but run your hand across them when you see the unit. The power button has great tactile feedback, and you have this power light that goes around it, which you can toggle on and off. We'll get to that in a moment. To power the unit on, you simply press and release the switch. Likewise, to power it off, just press and release as well. We found that some customers press and hold this button for several seconds, which actually creates a hard shutdown, and that's not recommended. Let's go ahead and take a look at the underside of the unit. This unit will toggle the power light that's on the front of the unit on and off. So if you're using the MV in a dark room and it's facing you and you'd rather it be off, just go ahead and toggle that on and it'll make sure that that power light always stays off whether the unit is on or off. Moving along, we can see here in this ventilation area, there's actually 220 millimeter fans and those bring a lot of cool air into the unit. They're the two of five total uh, external case fans. We'll be getting to the others here in just a moment. To clean this, just use a little vacuum and go over the nylon mesh. Just be a little gentle with it. One tip, be mindful that you don't damage the filter when handling the unit. So for example, if you're grabbing the unit from the front and you put your hand underneath the unit, just want to be mindful where your fingers are going so they don't push up into the mesh. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the left side of the case. Here, we find the remaining fans. These are 340 millimeter fans. Now, you might fear that seeing all these fans means lots of noise. It's actually quite the opposite. The MV is quiet as a mouse. It even supports a silent mode if you're using the unit nearby. We'll cover those details in a future lesson. Again, to clean these filters, just use a vacuum with a little soft brushing across them. Any dust will come right off. Now, let's take a look at the right side of the case. Here we find the power supply fan. Now, this fan typically does not turn, but it may depending on the load and temperature of your system. This fan is also nearly silent. Finally, let's take a look at the rear of the unit. Now, as you can see here, this is another place where you can find the serial number. Okay, this is the fourth place on the unit. Uh, a fourth place where you can find the serial number. One was on the outside product box. Another was on the white product box itself. Now on the rear of the unit. And finally in the Envy menu, which we'll cover at another time. This is perhaps my favorite view of the Envy on the rear. You've got this great ventilation system back here that helps keep the system cool and quiet. And take a look at the power supply. This is an automatic switching power supply going between 120 and 240 volts. You want to make sure that this power supply toggle switch is always in the on position. If you go to turn the unit on and for some reason it doesn't come on, just double check that that switch is in the on position. Someone may have turned it off. And as a reminder, this is also not how to turn the MV off. Now the MV draws up to about 400 watts on the extreme and 200 watts on the pro. We do recommend using a UPS to help prevent unexpected loss of power. As for the connections on the unit, let's go ahead and take a look at those. The first is an HDMI 2.0 input. You'll connect this typically from the output of your AVR. Over here, we have the HDMI output. You'll connect this to your display. The MV Extreme will output up to 4K120 or 8K60, and the MV Pro. 4K60. There's also a zero latency pass through here. This is great for gaming. We'll cover that later as well. Turning your attention to the LAN port, 
Landport is fantastic for several functions. Let's go over those. Firmware updates. The MV supports instant firmware updates downloadable right through the unit and installed with just a couple of clicks. In fact, most firmware updates are completed in under five seconds. So you want the Envy connected to the internet through this ethernet port in order to be notified and to download updates in the future. It's also great for IP control. What types of things might you want to do with IP control? Well, basic things like turning a unit on and off, as well as recalling profiles. So for example, if you want your favorite settings recalled when you use a certain input on your AVR, you can automate that through your control system. It's also great for controlling screen masking and several other types of functions. Another important reason to use the internet is for remote access. Dealers with the user's prior permission are able to log into the unit and control it just like they were in the room with the end user. This is phenomenal for doing technical support so the customer does not have to schedule a time for the dealer to come out and the dealers can simply fix any types of issues, remotely log in and provide any support that the user may need from the luxury of their office or their own home. Now, let's turn our attention to the USB ports. First two here you see to the left are for RF and IR. We took a look at the RF dongle that we saw previously during the unboxing. There's also an IR dongle in here as well that will come standard installed with the unit. The other two uh, USB ports can be used for things such as keyboards. This is useful for naming profiles or for calibration LUTs that may be created. Or in the event that remote is unavailable, you can use the keyboard as a remote. The other USB port is useful for doing power control for active fiber cables. So if you're using an active fiber cable and it needs power at that end, you can easily adjust it and connect it right through the port. So in conclusion, this is a comprehensive overview of the external aspects of the Envy. Now let's move on to our next lesson.